time. Do time. Forget about statically indeterminate torsional loaded members. Forget about delta T for a minute. Uh, we're going to talk about torsion. All right, we're going to talk about torsion. Torsion is a twisting moment about the axial direction, right? It, it, it's, it's a twist like this, right? A twist like this. That's torsion. So let's write a twisting moment. In the axial direction, it's actually about the axial direction. My thumb is pointing in the axial direction. In the axial direction. So we'll call it T. It is a torque, and it's an internal moment about the axial direction right it, it, it's what you think right torque is a twisting moment T. and if you want i last year in the years past i've tried to derive this i stole it from structure free this figure and the next figure if you want the derivation Structure free does it a lot better than, than I do. Find, and you really should look up structure free on YouTube uh, anyway. <clears throat> a torque causes a stress that we haven't calculated yet. All right, a torque causes a stress. The stress is. So you can, let, let's say this was one beam that was being twisted. Let's say this was one beam that was being twisted, that had a torque on it. What type of stress would this face feel from this one if it was being stressed? What, what type of internal force, internal stress would it feel? Just kind of put your hand right here. It would feel a sheer stress all right it would feel a sheer stress all right it would feel a sheer stress i don't know if you can see this right here <clears throat> it would feel a sheer stress that looks kind of like this if we're right on the edge it, as we get closer to the center it would get smaller and smaller that's what these two diagrams show it would feel a sheer stress that's why it's called tau so the shear stress caused by an internal torque T, it would be zero at the middle. Imagine this was solid. Imagine you are a tiny little square on this face. If you were on the outside edge, you would be getting sheared more than if you're close to the middle, close to the middle. If you were at the middle, you would not feel any shear stress due to this internal torque T. So uh, what would the magnitude of this shear stress be? We could kind of guess, we could think about a few things. Uh, the larger the T, the larger the shear stress you would feel. Uh, and then this row is how far you are away from the center of the cross section. And then we're going to divide it by J. J is the polar moment of inertia. So let, let me rewrite this real, real big. T rho over J. The shear stress caused by torque is T rho over J. T is the internal torque, the internal moment in the axial direction. Rho is the distance away from the center, really the center of gravity, the center of the cross section. 
and J is the polar moment of inertia. Um, it is a measure of how much area is away from the center of your um, cross section. Um, you know, mass moment of inertia is a measure of how much mass is away from your rotation. Area moment of inertia is a measure of how much area. And polar moment of inertia is a measure of how much area is out from the center and how far out radially it is from the center. Polar moment of inertia is its resistance to twisting. It's resistance to twisting. And next page, next page, we could also derive this. But next page, the polar moment inertia, and this is on your formula sheet, if you still have that formula sheet. Um, technically, it's the integral of rho squared dA, but for a solid circular cross section, one half pi, uh, the book might say c to the fourth. It's just the outer radius to the fourth. I'm going to put r to the fourth. It's one half pi r to the fourth. Be careful and don't mix this up. Area is, you know, one fourth pi r squared, right? Or pi diameter squared, you know, or, or pi r squared. Um, I'm messing it up now. Right? But don't, for, don't mess up that one. It's one half pi radius to the fourth. One half pi radius to the fourth. Make sure I give that to you. Yes. Uh, for a tube, this is one half pi. You probably could have guessed this. Our outer to the fourth minus our inner to the fourth. The book probably says C outer to the fourth minus C inner to the fourth, but C is just the outer radius. Okay, let's just simplify it down to that. The stress, the shear stress caused by a torque, TR over J, and I might even say R over J, but, but this is how far you are away over J. And um, the J is one half pi R to the fourth. Now, what direction is this torque? Well, it, 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 it depends. You know, if you're right here, the direction would be right here. You know, if I'm right here, the direction of that stress would be right here. The direction of that stress, if we, while y'all are in my dynamics class, the direction is perpendicular to these radial lines right there. The direction. So, so at the very bottom, it might be perfectly horizontal. Top that way here this way here if you're lucky we'll just look at those four uh extreme values okay okay i wanted to start i don't know if we can do this let's set this up for next class okay so the main thing about this tau is tr over j and j is one half pi r to the fourth power.